ESPN Promise Positive Vibes. The atmosphere speaks for itself here inside a sold out Cameron Indoor Stadium. The students lining up who knows how long to get the best seats they can get here inside this historic building. Saturday primetime presented by Direct TV. And this is the one they've been waiting for here on Tobacco Road. The number one team in the nation, the North Carolina Tar Heels, are here in Durham to try to avenge a defeat to the Blue Devils from earlier this season. As if that weren't enough, as Reese mentioned, another thing that's at stake here tonight, the outright ACC regular season championship. Hi, everybody. Dan Schulman to Dick Vitale in a very warm building. Thrilled to be with you for what should be a great night of basketball here tonight. No matter what's at stake, this game always speaks for itself. Such a great rivalry. Well, you talk about rivalries. They talk about Michigan, Ohio State, and football. This is by far the best rivalry of all. And it's always so much at stake. Tonight at stake, obviously, the ACC regular season championship. A chance to be a number one seed in the right here baby in the east because you play your first two games at Raleigh and then you go over to Charlotte and you don't have to get in a play to go to San Antonio and I know talking to both coaches before the game this means a great deal because this is a test of an entire season to be the champ and to sustain greatness is absolutely special now as big as this game always is and is tonight in some ways it has taken a back seat after the news of earlier this week the murder of UNC student body president Eve Carson. The body of the Athens, Georgia native was found on Wednesday. And at this time, although there are some leads, no arrest has been made. Carson was an outstanding student and a well-known and well-liked young woman who had an incredibly bright future. In her honor, everyone inside Cameron Indoor Stadium tonight is wearing a Carolina blue ribbon as the communities of Durham and Chapel Hill both pay tribute to the memory of Eve Carson. Ladies and gentlemen, we would ask that you remain standing and this uh, for a moment of silence followed by the singing of our national anthem. At this time, we come together not as two rival schools, but as one community to join together in a moment of silence in honor of the life of Eve Carson, the University of North Carolina student body who was tragically killed earlier this week. Thank you. Presenting the colors at tonight's game is the Duke Navy ROTC Color Guard. And now, please join us in honoring America and celebrating its freedom and those who protect it for the singing of our national anthem, being performed tonight by Megan Lumsden. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there oh, oh say
Let's go Duke is the chant that is now rocking Cameron Indoor Stadium. A quick meeting between Roy Williams and Mike Krzyzewski and we're just about ready for basketball here in Durham. The rivalry the 225th time that these two schools have met North Carolina holds the upper hand overall. It is a rarity when neither one of the teams is ranked. Usually they're both ranked tonight. They're both in the top five. This decade has been Duke's best decade ever in the rivalry against North Carolina. Time now for the starting line. Now, ladies and gentlemen, let's meet tonight's starting lineups. First for the Tar Heels of the University of North Carolina. A 6'5 junior from Alexandria, Virginia, number one, Marcus Ginyard. At 6'8, and a sophomore from Torrance, California, number 21, Dion Thompson. At 6'9, and a junior from Poplar Bluff, Missouri, number 50, Tyler Hansbrough. A 6'4 sophomore from Wynwood, Pennsylvania, number 22, Wayne Ellington. And it's 6'3 and a senior from Oakland, California, number 11, Quentin Thomas. Your head coach, Mr. Roy Williams. And now for your Blue Devils. At 6'8 and a freshman from Medford, Oregon, number 12, Kyle Singler. A 6'8 sophomore from Scotch Plains, New Jersey, number 42, Lance Thomas. At 6'4", and a sophomore from Marion, Pennsylvania, number 15, Gerald Henderson. At 6'1", and a junior from Syracuse, New York, number 3, Greg Paulus. And from Elk Grove, California, a 6'4", senior, number 21, Demarcus Nelson. Your head coach, Mr. Mike Krzyzewski. There you have the starting lineups for the Tar Heels and the Blue Devils. Ty Lawson will play, won't start for Carolina. Didn't play in the first game, won by Duke. Time now to take a look at tonight's Chevron Star Watch, Dickie B. Well, you talk about stars. Certainly Tyler Hansborough, my choice to be National Player of the Year. Demarcus Nelson having a terrific senior season. Not injured, he has been absolutely a quality player with my choice to make the All-ACC team. And of course tonight, senior night for Demarcus Nelson. For more on that, down to Aaron Andrews. And Dan, Demarcus told me he's never been involved in a game with so much on the line. Oh, by the way, it's senior night. He has 17 people in town, and he says he doesn't know what his reaction is going to be when he steps off this court for the final time. But he told me he knows one thing. He does not want to have the same feeling that former Duke player J.J. Redick and Sheldon Williams had two years ago when UNC came to town and spoiled their party. DeMarcus told me that is a game he thinks about all the time. He feels awful for his former teammates to end their career this way, and he does not want that to happen to him tonight. Well, I'll tell you one thing, Aaron. In that game, Tyler Hansborough had 27 points and was dominant, 10 rebounds, and they beat the Duke Cameron Crazies here, 83-76 on J.J. Redick night, Sheldon Williams night. Two key players tonight. I think a key player for North Carolina has to be Wayne Ellington. He can go three for 14 like he did in the first matchup. And another key player, I really believe, for Duke will be John Shire. He's going to give him point production when he comes off that bench. Two of the best bench players in America, really, and Danny Green for Carolina and John Shire for Duke. Gerald Henderson strikes first. And that's Duke's great asset. They made 13 threes in the first matchup. Carolina only made three. Henderson more of an athlete, more of a slasher than an outside shooter, but he was pure on that first shot. But remember in game one, we did not see Ty Lawson. We'll see him for at least about 25 minutes tonight. Wayne Ellington just three for 14 in the first game against wow. Duke. Makes a tough turnaround. You talk about a tough shot. I mean, that's a sign of a good night. You know, both guys that made the first shot, how's this? They played in high school together. That's right. High school teammates up in the state of Pennsylvania. Demarcus Nelson, the senior, the leading scorer for the Blue Devils, at better than 15 a game. The rebounding figures to be a key as well. Carolina's got the best rebound margin in the country. Duke, as you know, is not a very big team. Look at Hansborough fighting for it and cashing in. He is so unique the way he scores on the inside. He has a way of protecting the basketball. North Carolina is out-rebounding its opponents in 26 straight games. How about Hansbrough? 28 points and 18 rebounds in the first game. 
Even though they lost, offensive foul, Lance Thomas. But it wasn't enough because he didn't have enough help from yeah. his friends. Take a look right here, the offensive rebound, keeping the ball alive. And look at the way he protects that basketball. Beasley is the best player and talent in America, but Hansbro is the most outstanding player in America for what he does to his team. And to the victor goes the sport. And Mike Krzyzewski agrees with you. He said if he had a vote, Hansbro gets the award. Misses the jumper, follows it up and gets it back. Plays so hard, he plays with such feeling, such pride, wearing that jersey that says North Carolina. Nice feed inside, Thomas has it blocked. Thomas had a big game in the first matchup, had double figures, they gave him great defense as well. Quinton Thomas blocks Lance Thomas, and Quinton Thomas, who was the third string point guard at the beginning of the season, stepping up because of the injuries to Lawson and Fraser, and has really been instrumental in Carolina staying where they are. Well, in the six games he replaced Lawson, they went five and one. The only loss to do. Paulus had six threes in the win over Carolina last month, misses his first try tonight. Marcus Ginyard end to end, and the follow is good for Dion Thompson. Mike Shushevsky. Screaming that that ball was in the cylinder. Thompson's a player getting better and better. Had a little knee problem. They lost Brandon Wright to the NBA. Left early. Henderson with the pull up from the elbow. And another rebound for Quinton Thomas. Carolina will look to run at every opportunity. They score 90 points per game, second in the country. Ellington frees himself. Singler holds off Hansbro for the rebound. Singler, the best freshman in the ACC. He's going to be a solid inside outside player before it's said and done. Plays a lot on the perimeter right now, but he'll get stronger physically. Yeah, he's given up 30 pounds in that matchup against Hansbro. Brian Zubek, who did not play in the first game against Carolina, out with a broken foot, will see minutes tonight. Singler penetrates all the way to the rim, blocked from behind by Thompson. Good play by Thompson defensively. Now they're going to execute their half court game. Double up. And a foul, says Carl Hess, working the game along with Ted Valentine and Roger Ayers. Paula Hensbro goes to the free throw line more than anybody in conference play. 310 times. Yep, looks like it was in the cylinder as Thompson knocked it back in. Danny Green is into the game and now for Carolina. And here comes Ty Lawson as well for Quentin Thomas. Now they change the complexion in a club. They become ultra quick. He is as quick as anybody in America with the basketball. So is Collison down to UCLA. Alex Stevenson is in as well. Hansbrough's out early. Probably not for long. Nice feed. Lawson to Green. I tell you, he does things you can't teach. He creates, he innovates, good penetration off the dribble. Roy Williams estimated he's at about 80% with that ankle. Also suffered a bit of a hip pointer during their game this week, but he is expected to get a fair number of minutes tonight. Zubek is in the game now for Duke, as is Shire. Take a look at Lawson. He beats you off the dribble with great quickness. Then he's under control. There's the little dish, the little layup. Two guys off the bench contribute right away. Lawson and Green. Shire slithers his way inside. I told you before the yeah. show, he could be a key player off the bench. Look at him run. Wow. Look at them get the ball up the court. You know what that was reminiscent of? I know you were in Boston land last night. The Celtics That's with right. Red Arback, man. They used to take the ball out after a score and go the other way for layup. That's right. Some teams can score off a miss very quickly. Carolina can score off a make very quickly as well. Danny Green with a block on Singler. Singler didn't have a good angle right there, Dan. Really didn't have a good end. We got a hell of a ball. We got a good start. We got a great rivalry and a memory. Back in 1995, Jerry Stackhouse helping Carolina win. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is presented by DirecTV. Must have equipment for any sports fan. And in part by the first ever G8 from Pontiac, the official performance machines of the NCAA. This ESPN telecast is available in sparkling high definition on ESPN HD. 
presented oh, by Olivia. And look who is stepping. Look yeah. at the moves on Jay Billis yeah, he's here back tonight. He's alma mater. <laughs> Wife's in the house. She said, that's my guy, Jay. Look at the agility. Look at the balance. Look at the balance. <laughs> Jay Billis, class of 86 here at Duke. Look who else is in the house. Wow. A couple of Super Bowl wow. MVPs. Peyton and Eli. Yep. I'm going to go down and get some autographs. Can I leave you a minute? I'm going to no go problem. get an autograph. No problem. Wow. Both, of course, played for David Cutcliffe, the Duke uh, football coach here at Duke. Hands roll back into the game, and it is out of bounds off him to the Blue Devils. Hansbro saying that he threw it out of bounds off Zubek. Hansbro checking that elbow may already be bruised or cut. Who knows the way that he plays. Well, his two trips here have been very successful. They have not lost. A bucket for Zubek. He's a guy who can be an impact player in this game with his size. You know, his size. I think he's up some quality minutes. That's all they want. Although he's covering Stevenson Dick and Singler still on Hansbro. Juggling it and then missing the shot is Deion Thompson. Demarcus Nelson. I'll tell you one thing they're doing tonight, they didn't do in the first matchup. They're shooting the three too quickly. In the first matchup, they were shooting it off a dribble and drive, creating the opportunity with the penetration off the dribble. Right now, they're just shooting, letting it really fly without getting that dribble penetration. Zubek the foul, his first. Henderson and Thomas return for Duke. Freshman Nolan Smith comes in as well to play the point. Duke's a much deeper and more athletic team than a year ago. Yeah, well, they're able to generate some offense with their defense, something they couldn't do a year ago. Last year, Duke scored 70 points per game. This year, 85. Thompson over the back for the foul. And a lot of that's because of the defensive pressure. Last year, their defense did not create much offense. Roy Williams, Hall of Famer, really very, very in pain over the passing of Eve Carson. She had some great quotes about him. Well, Roy Williams met her. Some of the players on the team were friendly with her and just a something that has stunned the entire community not just of chapel hill during the entire state of north carolina and an unspeakable tragedy for her family well, you know this game obviously very important in the world of basketball but it really pales pales in important to what happened to that young lady let's just hope there's a big victory with a bulletin that the chapel hill police have found that killer and there are leads the news today police have released a photo of someone they say they have interest in who used Eve Carson's ATM card and it appeared was in her truck at the time. Those are the latest details we have, but again, no arrests have been made. Nolan Smith from the elbow. Smith's a guy that comes off the bench, very positive minutes, a diaper dandy, can shoot the long range shot, will be eventually a solid point guard. Number two on Brian Zubek. Zubek cannot match up with Hansbro inside. There's no way he can handle it. There aren't many guys that no. can handle it one-on-one. -on -one. <laughs> so Two-on-one, three-on-one. Yeah, Zubek doesn't have to feel bad about that. There are a lot of guys that can't handle it. So Zubek leaves, and Singler comes back in. Singler's got a foul already. Let's see if they go right back into Hansbro. Right now, Nolan Smith is on Hansbro, trying to get position, and the foul is called on Nolan Smith, and here's why, one of the reasons why Hansbro is so lethal, he gets entire teams into foul yep. trouble. As soon as he touches the ball, he's gonna get double and triple team, but that was a big concern of Mike Krzyzewski, keeping Hansbro from getting him into foul trouble, getting him on a free throw line, and a bonus really early. Now Singler's on it. They'll double him up now. Baseline jumper, little strong, rebound Singler, and he's fouled. He was shocked right there, Hansbro, that they were playing him one-on-one. -on -one. Yep. He was shocked. He couldn't believe he had a little one-on-one -on -one maneuver. Well, Hansbro's had some incredible numbers. The numbers went up when Ty Lawson went out, scoring about 27, 28 points per game. A junior who's on the verge of breaking or has already broken so many records. You talked about the free throw records. Gets to the line more than anybody in the country. Not this time for Smith and Danny Green a rebound. Green's an important guy will play the three, may also play the four tonight for Carolina. 
Lawson into traffic. It's an offensive foul. Teddy Valentine with the ball. Teddy with a little heavy heart in this game. His brother Henry Harris is really battling cancer right now. And certainly we want to simply say, really keep fighting, 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 Henry. Don't give up, man, as Jimmy V used to say. Don't ever give up. Roy Williams takes Lawson out. Quinton Thomas back in. Thomas, a guy who played behind Raymond Felton as a freshman, then had Bobby Fraser come in and take his job, then had Lawson come in and drop him down to the number three. But because of the injuries, Thomas has played more this year than ever before. And he's been a solid contributor. Henderson off to Singler. Plenty of time on the shot clock. Singler spins, has it taken away. North Carolina playing better defensively as a unit. Something that was really a question mark early this year. Danny Green from Marcus Ginyard. The lead back to four for Carolina. See, Duke likes to spread the court, beat you off the dribble, and then spot somebody up for the three because they have very little post presence inside. Lance Thomas with the foul. Number two on him. From the shadows of segregation came basketball's unknown legends who changed the game forever. Black Magic, presented by Russell and State Farm, is on ESPN Sunday, March 16th, and again, Monday, March 17th, at 9 Eastern. Dick Thomas has to come out. He's got two. Zubek's got two. Singler's on the floor with one. Paulus has come back in. Taylor King is in now, but Duke's not very big, and their big guys have some early foul trouble. Well, Taylor King's a specialist. He can shoot the three. Green. He knew he missed that one. Followed it right away. Rebound Nelson. I tell you, Nelson's so versatile. He's been a multi-dimensional player. He's battled so many injuries in his career. Singler, a good look from the corner. And the rebound to Thompson. Duke 13 out of 29 hitting threes a month ago when they beat Carolina in Chapel Hill. They spread the court really well in that game. They're going to double up as soon as he touches the ball. Double up inside. And jump ball. It is intense here tonight with Carolina leading by four. Well, you've seen us count down 24 of the top 25 greatest players in college basketball. Coming up. We reveal number one. IBM presents the 25 greatest players ever. Number one, Lou Alcindor. Lou Alcindor changed the game of college basketball. This three-time All-American and 1969 Naismith Award winner dominated every time he took the floor. He compiled an 88-2 record and won three national championships. IBM, getting it done. Well, Dick, as a number of people said to me in recent weeks, if it wasn't Lou Alcindor, there should have been an investigation. Oh, absolutely. I think there's no doubt about it. He changed the game. It took away the dunk and all. It still couldn't stop him. Hey, when you see Lou Alcindor, you got to think about John Wooden. And we wish the Wizard yeah. of Westwood the best in his recovery because he was so special. Look at those five. I'd like to coach those five. Are you kidding me? Look at those five. I couldn't screw them up, and I've been known to screw up some teams. <laughs> How about the last couple of days, by the way, that UCLA had with a win over wow. Stanford and then another miracle win that over shot was good. Today. That shot was good. I'm going to tell you why that shot was good at the end of the game. It was not clearly behind the backboard. Had it been come from clearly behind, it would have been no good. But there was some doubt. You talk about Great a team comeback. that's had some adversity and found ways to win games this year. That's UCLA. Taylor King to the miss. Offensive rebound. Paulus. Henderson misses the three. And Duke. One of the most dangerous three-point shooting teams in the nation is cold early tonight. They've hit one so far. They made, Thomas. They made eight threes in that first matchup in the first half. Only yep. one thus far here. Taylor King the foul. That's the seventh already at Duke. Carolina's going to the line with 11.20 to go in the first half. And that was a concern of Mike Krzyzewski before the game. He said that's the one area Tyler Hansborough helps them so much, he gets them in a bonus yeah. early. Now Thompson would have been a shooting foul anyways, but the point being that's the seventh, and there will be a lot of free throws shot by Carolina here in the first half. You know, I read a great story about certainly Tyler in Sports Illustrated coming down here by Grant Wall. Terrific story. I didn't know about his brother. I knew about Ben right. playing at Mississippi State. 
I didn't know about his older brother who had a brain tumor. He said he's so courageous, partially paralyzed, has run three marathons. He's going to be a track coach. He said he's so dedicated to his brother Greg. Great story by Grant Rule. The analogy drawn to the Manning brothers and Peyton and Eli are here tonight. Their brother Cooper, who suffers from spinal stenosis and had to give up his football career. Gerald Henderson, way long, and Duke not shooting the ball well early, and now a turnover. Mike Krzyzewski, 801 wins. Think about it. He spoke so emotionally about his love for Bob Knight, who taught him so much, he said, as a youngster when he played for him at West Point when he recruited him. He got really emotional about that. Coach K, sixth all-time on the win list, 101 back of Bob Knight. It'll be Carolina ball. No, it won't. It'll be Duke ball. As Some, Roger Ayers comes down and makes the call. Something tells me we have not seen the last of Coach Knight, and I don't mean on television. <laughs> going to be uh, stalking the sideline again somewhere, you think, huh? I wouldn't doubt it. I think he's got another 10 years in him. He loves the gym, loves to teach. Duke's gone three and a half minutes since making the basket. Nelson. That's the one area Roy Williams really happy with is the improvement defensively. You know, they haven't lost on the road. That's right. There's only two teams that can claim that, Memphis and North Carolina. A travel on Demarcus Nelson. Carolina's two losses, both at home to Maryland and, of course, to Duke. Duke lost in New York to Pittsburgh and then lost consecutive games last month at Wake and at Miami. Tell you one thing, you talk about this conference right now. You look at the record they have versus the other top conferences. They got the best record, 30 and 19. They won 61% of their games. Green defended by Nelson. Hansborough's got Singler on him right now. Green driving, takes a bump, finishes strong. I tell you one thing about Green. He was one for ten in the first matchup. He's already made three baskets in this game. Ellington, Green, and Ginyard all struggled shooting the ball in the first game against Duke. They're playing much better defensively, North Carolina, as a unit. They're rotating, they're communicating, their half-court defense is a lot better, Aaron Andrews. They are. Guys, you know, one thing head coach Mike Krzyzewski told us, with it being senior night, UNC's in town, last regular season game, he's very worried about senior Demarcus Nelson. He said, I don't want him to use up too much energy tonight. He's scoreless so far, guys, but he has been talking to guys like Greg Paulus, other his teammates, and saying, just calm down, calm down. Well, right now they got to get a hand in the face of Danny Green. Well, we talked on the top of the show. I tell you, two important players for North Carolina, Green and Ellington. Yep. They were 4 for 24 in the first matchup. Not this matchup. The Cameron Crazies come to the aid of their team right now, trying to spur them on. Duke's down 11. Hey, North Carolina just knows how to win on the road. They got a special winner's mentality. Shire the handoff. Paulus. Carolina defending the perimeter well. No easy looks the last few minutes for Duke. Nearly another turnover. You don't want to go in that corner and pick up your dribble. Good find to Singler. Nice feed to Henderson, who is fouled. Henderson's going to have wrist surgery at the end of the year. Very explosive player. See, the right now, the ACC is ranked, according to the RPI, number one. Big East 2, Big 12 3, Pac-10 4. I say the VBDI has the Pac-10 1, Big East 2, ACC 3. As you look at Gerald Henderson Sr., played in the NBA for over a dozen years. As his son, you would imagine, will one day. Just tremendous upside, great athleticism, and the numbers are all way up from a year ago. Let me tell you why they're number one in the RPI. They're number one, Dan, because right now, they don't have a team ranked below 115 in the RPI. The other five conferences have a total of 17 teams below the 115 mark. Dick, by the way, that foul was on Danny Green, his second. And he's been perhaps, as you said, the key player in the game so far tonight, but he's now gone to the bench. Yeah, he's really been a positive force, as you said earlier. Shire and Green, two of the best roll aid specialists in America. Lawson back into the point for Carolina. Hansbro driving on Singler, backs him down and lays it in. Can't play him inside. Oh, look at the steal. What a breakdown. Oh. Hansbro now with four. Henderson. Nelson. And it is Carolina ball. You know, Hubert Davis made a great point. Make Duke put the ball on the floor and try to beat you with twos and not threes. Take a look at the All-American, the All-Rose Royce here. 
Tenacious Tyler. Oh, is he tenacious? Tough to Tyler. I'll tell you, he is special. How about in his five games against Duke, he's averaging about 22 points serious? and 11 rebounds per game. There's Lawson. Can't teach that, my friends. Hey, if that's Can't 80%. Teach that. <laughs> Are you serious? If he is healthy, this is my team to win the national championship. As it was back at the beginning of the year, right? Yeah, preseason at number one. Shire is fouled by Guignard. Another look at Ty Lawson accelerating to the goal. Take a look at this right here. And then he's going to use the reverse layup because he's going to utilize the basket to protect the basketball. Hey. Lawson did not play. It bears repeating in that first game against Duke. He was injured the game before. I know a guy eating his heart out that's not here tonight, and I feel so bad for him. Jim Flowenberg, he donated $100,000 to the V Foundation for four tickets. Mike Krzyzewski, you were there hosting it, yeah. it yeah. at my event. Snowstorm has kept them oh, away. No. Hey, Jim, don't worry about it. Talk to Mike before the game. You got a rain check. You got a rain check for next year. He's the head of Check Smart. He is such a generous guy. Also, a guy that gave us 100000 for games for a game. I want to also sing his praises, and that is Chris Sullivan of Outback. He gave us 100000 for Florida and Kentucky. Here's how bad the weather is up in Ohio. Apparently LeBron James was going to be coming yeah. to the game tonight, but even King James couldn't beat Mother Nature. Yeah, Mike told us that he called before the game and was going to come down. We do know, or we've been told, that Christian Leitner, Chris Duhon, Billy King, Jason Williams are among the Blue Devils in the house here tonight. Sydney Sforzo, Terry Sforzo, <laughs> Lorraine McGrath, Vital, Matthews in the house, <laughs> Matthew Schulman. A little push off there. Ellington called for the foul to take us to a timeout. First on Ellington. Mr. Williams, Mr. Duhon, a couple of great guards here in Durham. Scott, thank you. Welcome back to Durham, North Carolina. 24-13 Carolina over Duke. What's at stake here tonight? Well, pride and the rivalry and all that. The ACC regular season title and an inside track to stay in North Carolina all through the tournament. Both of these teams can go to Raleigh for the two, first two rounds because of the pod system that was instituted a few years ago, but only one of them can go to Charlotte for the regionals. Well, you know, both coaches will tell you, it's not important, but you ready for this? North Carolina is 21-1 in NCAA tournament action in the state of Carolina. And in 1982, as you look at Coach K, 1982, they won the national championship. They played in Charlotte, and then Raleigh, and then the young phenom freshman by the name of Michael the Magnificent <laughs> hit a miracle shot to lead them to the national title. Gerald Henderson up and over everybody. He's got such explosiveness. What a special venue this is. So unique. The fans right on top of you. The spirit. Deion Thompson from the baseline. Follows his miss and is fouled. That's the big advantage North Carolina has. The ability to get on the glass. A foul on Henderson is first. A little one-on-one -on -one maneuver. His dad says, boy, I'm proud. I'll tell you one thing, his dad didn't have hops like that. <laughs> oh, a few do. Now, here are a couple of things Roy Williams said about the whole Raleigh and Charlotte thing. He reminded us that as the coach of Kansas, I think it was 95, he said. Yeah, it happened in 95. Yeah. I know what he's saying. They got they, beat in Kansas City. They got beat in Kansas City. But City. you know what? what? I don't buy the fact that it doesn't matter. He down deep wants to stay in his state. I mean, come uh, on now. Who, got, oh, oh, look at this one guy. It's the newest iteration of Speedo guy. You, you never saw me saw with Speedo. You never no, saw that. No. <laughs> <laughs> and that's, you know what? Nobody needs to see either one of us. Speedo guy, you probably saw the story on game day or Sports Center earlier today. A guy from a few years ago disrupted Jackie Manuel shooting free throws. And apparently he has uh, passed the baton, so to speak, to a new Speedo guy. Aaron, what do you have? Dan, I got, it's a no Speedo zone here. Camera in two Cameron in 2004, Coach K he put the kibosh, the Nick say, if you will, on the speedos, telling students no more of that. But there have been incidents. It was in 2005, speedo guy's friend. Well, he revealed himself. Actually, when UNC's Marvin Williams was trying to make some free throws, he missed them both, and UNC lost by one. Wow. The curse of the speedo. Did you ever think, as a coach, you'd have to institute a no speedo zone in your home arena? <laughs> Shire. They need Nelson. this one. They need this one. 
Singler with the offensive rebound. I think Nelson's trying too hard. I think Aaron's right. It's senior night, the emotion. I think he wants to do so well. Mom and dad in the house. Mom and dad here to see him perform. They did a great job raising a beautiful son. What did they tell Coach K when they came in the house to recruit him? He said, I, they've watched Amica and they've and watched Dawkins. Dawkins yeah. And we want our son to be like him, but like them as people. Ten-point lead for Carolina. Duke just one of eight from three-point range. Again, they were 13 out of 29 in the first game. Not getting open looks on the three. Three misses, and it is out of bounds to Duke. And we'd like to apologize for the gestures that the new Speedo guy made here tonight. He didn't do it in the same uh, manner as the old guy did. The old guy was doing it for fun. This guy was taking it to another extreme, and we apologize to those who may have been offended by what you saw. Nolan Smith, no. Shooting. Rebound Thompson. Thompson's getting some big minutes here tonight. They're shooting the ball too quickly. Duke's not patient enough. Out of bounds to Carolina. Danny Green is back in despite two fouls. He's got a game high 10 points here tonight. Well, NBA Sunday is on ABC at 3.30 Eastern tomorrow as the San Antonio Spurs take on the Phoenix Suns. The Spurs quietly, again, right near the top of the standings. The Suns just 3-6 and six since Shaq joined them. A big game tomorrow. Coverage begins at 3 Eastern on ABC with the GMC NBA counter. Tell you one thing, they look totally out of sync when you look at the Suns right now. Hands bro. Wow. He's a monster inside. He's an absolute monster. He really knows how to convert, to protect the ball, to get to the foul line. Six points, six rebounds for Hansbro. David McClure is in for Duke. Another missed three. This one by Nelson again. Zubak. And Hansbro comes down with his seventh rebound. He's going to head for another double double tonight. Tyler. Lawson. Ellington. Zubak with a block. Out of bounds to Carolina. Zubek with injuries in the offseason. Again, missed nine games this year with a broken foot. Perhaps has not been able to come as far as they would like, but he's the biggest guy by far that Duke has. And Ellington fouled by Shire. I'll tell you one thing, they're doing well. They're playing better defensively in their half court game, and North Carolina executing in their half court game is getting a lot of movement without the basketball. Duke is shooting, Dick. 22 percent wow. tonight. Now Carolina's only shooting 38, but that's enough for a 12-point lead. Well, that's because of the defense by North Carolina. Roy Williams, a member of my old GQ team. I mean, he can flat out dress. Lost it out. Thomas back in. Ellington to the line. But GQ's going to post my GQ coaching stars. Would you have a top dress? 10 or a yeah. final four? Would you? Have? I got them all. Ellington, the sharpshooter, 16 points per game, a sophomore. And the guy more adept at scoring off the bounce this year than he was a year ago. Not just an outside shooter looking to make amends for a poor shooting night against Duke a month ago. Well, John Shire's got to get going. He's only got four tonight at 26 here last year at 17 in game one when they beat North Carolina. See, they're really coming out on the defense. They're really trying to pressure the three-point shooters. Pause for three. You know, and that was a tough three. I mean, he had a hand right in his face. What a family. Brother goes to North Carolina. Might be the quarterback. Three other brothers went to Georgetown. Paul is a 43% shooter from beyond the arc and handling the ball much better this year than he did a year ago. Well, you know, Dan, the way they shoot the three, they can get back in the game quickly. And another guy, Dick, sometimes players are hurt. Sometimes they play through an injury. Paulus was not right last year. Had off-season foot surgery, healthier this year and having his best season. Well, he's having a terrific year. And they got such weapons shooting the three that they can get back in the game quickly. But if they're to win, Demarcus Nelson has to start giving them some point production. He's their leading scorer, averaging 15 a game. And it is senior night for Demarcus Nelson. Always an emotional experience. McClure with a block. He's the he's the guts and glue blue collar guy of this Duke team. Yeah, he is a blue collar guy. He's battled a lot of injuries. You look at the two clubs here. Between them, only five losses. Playing tough competition. They take everybody's best hit. And the other thing that makes these two teams special, 
You'd never hear about NCAA violations. Hands blow the miss. McClure the rebound. Numbers for Duke. Paul is wide open. What a terrific job of executing. They ran, they fanned out to the three-point line. Carolina didn't find the three-point shooter. See that three-point shot? That didn't get you back in the game, Dan. What enthusiasm and energy and excitement to freeze out of that crowd. It is amazing. Green shut off on the baseline. Shot clock at 10. You have to be here to feel this. In and out for Thompson. Loose ball to Duke. This Feel is little, a special place. It really is. Yeah. We were in a special place last week as well. Rock short, Jay Hawk, who, by the way, they're one of my choices to go to the Final Four. I like that Kansas team. I like their athleticism. I like their perimeter play. Got a win at Texas A&M earlier today. If Texas wins tomorrow, they'll share the regular season crown in the Big 12 as Paulus's two threes have gotten Duke closer in this game. Well, single digits now, Danny. Singler struggling, picks it up. Now sets a screen. Shire couldn't get the shot off. The dump down for Singler. Wow. Off the glass. Came out of Oregon like Kevin Love did. Danny Green, he's got a dozen, Dick. He's been real magical tonight. He had one for ten in that first matchup. And the lead back to eight for Carolina. 3.20 to go in the first half. And there's Duke trying to split the court. Excellent spacing. Trying to make it difficult for you to give help. Paul is again. How's he feeling it? He was feeling it. I tell you, this kid was also USA Today's player of the year in football as a quarterback. He's a tough competitor. David Cutcliffe might want to get hit. Ellington with the answer at the other end for the heels. Well, Ellington and Green have responded tonight. They didn't respond in game one. They were four for 24. Hansbrough on a switch on Paulus, a deep three. And Green rips down the rebound in traffic. Four on one. Oh, what a great job. What a terrific job in transition. I mean, you couldn't plan that any better as a coach. They run their fast break drills, not any better than that. Give and go the simplest play in the game, Mr. Schulman. Up you give a, it and I go. Up to a 10-point lead now for Carolina, playing Roy Williams basketball on that trip. One baby run, that's Roy style. Knocked away. McClure gives it away to Green. Carolina again. They love to run, baby. I think about a timeout. I think about a T.O., Coach K. They're a terrific in transition. This North Carolina team is going to be such a tough outcome tournament time. Duke is lucky that Greg Paulus has found the range. He's got three threes, but they're still down a dozen. Carolina, though, in transition. Danny Green having a big night. Heels by a dozen. Now the crowd keeping its energy here inside Cameron Indoor Stadium, but North Carolina after a barrage of threes from Greg Paulus in transition, getting the lead back up to 12. You're used to seeing Duke be the team that closes out the first half, Dick, with a run where they try to put their away their opponent. Carol Doing a great job. Green off the bench has been sparkling. Singler is pushed. It'll be Hansbro with the foul, his first. And a timeout on the floor with a minute 52 to go here in the first half. Battles inside and out. ACC regular season supremacy on the line tonight in Durham. North Carolina and Duke, the greatest rivalry in college basketball. Oh, it is super, super Sensational, baby! Now, so many great players in this rivalry. College basketball royalty, I think, as Jay Billis said on game day earlier tonight. Christian Leitner is here. Jason Williams is here. 
Hey, Jay Billis and Hubert Davis are here. They yeah. played in some pretty special games between these two schools. Jason There's Williams. Jason Williams. Chris Duhon beside him. I'll tell you one thing. Jason was such a special player. What I like about him, he hasn't whined and cried. Had some adversity, as we know. His career came to an end. Made a bad decision on that motorcycle. He's sitting next to Carl Liebert. Played at the Naval Academy. He's now the chairman of the board at 24 Hours Fitness. And Jason works for them. By the way, Carl Liebert. Gave me great news. Put two tables for our big event for the V Foundation. Hansbro. Zubek goes down. Hansbro lays it in. They are flying all over the place right now. Hansbro's up to eight points. Hollis again. Can't leave it wide open. I'll tell you what, thing. he has great work ethic. If you ever watch him before a game, yep. his pre-practice routine is unbelievable. I say pre-practice, it's before the practice with the players. He comes out. First guy out today by about half an hour. Four threes already for Paulus. He had six in the win over Carolina last month. Then he tried to put a sandwich on him, a double up. Picked up his dribble. Will Graves has checked in for Carolina. Nice and lift. a foul is Ooh. called by Ted Valentine. Number three on Zubek. Number three on the big guy. He's going to have to come out. As well as North Carolina has played on the defensive side and the way they're executing, if Duke can go in at halftime under 10, I think they're going to feel pretty good about themselves. Paulus getting his instructions from Mike Krzyzewski. Deion Thompson at the line and misses the first. Coming up on the UPS Halftime Report with Reese Davis, Hubert Davis, Digger Phelps, and Jay Billis. Another amazing comeback for UCLA. It went down to the wire between Louisville and Georgetown for the Big East regular season title. And three more tickets get punched to the dance here today. Great action around college basketball all day. And now into the evening. Carolina up nine after two free throw misses by Deion Thompson. Tell you what's big. Demarcus Nelson has not scored. He's their leading scorer. Shire you, has it rejected. Dick by Graves. You can underemphasize how important that is when your leading scorer, your senior, who's got to give you leadership, has not scored here in the first half. Ellington caught in the corner, finds a wide open Lawson. He's so strong with the basketball. Lawson, they say he's playing at 80 percent. He looks pretty good to me tonight. <laughs> Duke can hold for the final shot down 11. He looks pretty good. He yeah. looks almost as good as you said. <laughs> well, Coach Williams told us he's only practiced about four times in the last five weeks, but 80 percent of Ty Lawson is better than 100 percent of most. Boy, Williams, what a job he did in Kansas. Average 27 wins a year for 14 years. Thompson swats away the Nelson attempt. Three seconds left. Tough to win when your star isn't going to put any points on the board for you. You saw that with Ellington in game one. You're seeing it here in game two with Demarcus Nelson. Ted Valentine's going to get in between Nelson and Hansbro and give each of them a warning. People don't realize sometimes the unbelievable emotional burden, players, referees. I told you earlier, Ted Valentine's brother battling cancer. He said, please say hello to him. We say hello, Henry. Singlet. And the first half comes to a close. The lowest scoring first half for Duke this season. Carolina hits its last six shots. They lead by 11, the biggest halftime deficit the Blue Devils have faced this year. Well, they certainly have not been one-dimensional. North Carolina had a lot of balance offensively. Great production off the bench by Green. And they did a solid job defensively in shutting down Demarcus Nelson. Duke won at Carolina a month ago. Carolina trying to avenge that defeat with a win here at Raucous Cameron Indoor Stadium on Demarcus Nelson's senior night. They're up 11 at the half. Roy Williams is with Aaron Andrews. Look up Greg Paulus. Four three-pointers. What adjustment he made on him in the second? Well, we've got to find him a lot. For one time, we didn't get picked up on the break, and break, and another time he's behind us three. But he is having a great night, too. But we've got, we can't let him four threes in one half. But the good news, what are you doing on Demarcus Nelson? He's scoreless so far in the first. Well, it's senior night. They hate game. We know that, so we just got to make sure. It Coach, thank you. At the half, Danny Green, 14 points. Tyler Hansbro, 8 points, 8 rebounds. Carolina leading by 11. Race to the gang are coming up next with the UPS Halftime Reports.
ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Papa John's. Order by text message or online at papajohns.com. Welcome back to ESPN Saturday Night Primetime presented by DirecTV. We are ready for the second half. North Carolina on the road, number one in the nation with an 11 point lead on Duke. How big are the opening minutes here, Dick? Well, really vital, especially for Duke. I tell you, this first half can be summarized very simple. When you're two star of stars, when you look at Nelson and Singler, they go one for 10. That's the reason you're down double digits. Duke also turned it over 10 times, and Carolina turned those 10 turnovers into 12 points. Points at the other end. Dan, I can't emphasize enough. When you shut down the top two scorers on a team yep. and they go one for ten, tough to win. Thomas follows his own miss and is foul. Lance Thomas had a big game in game one at double digits, did a solid job defensively. Time now for tonight's Columbia Sportswear game track. Carolina out shooting Duke. Duke got hot with threes near the end of the half thanks to Greg Paulus. Transition points, points off turnovers, all favoring Carolina. Whose big guy Tyler Hansbro just picked up his second foul. Let's check in with Aaron Andrews. Dan, and speaking with Duke assistant coach Chris Collins, he felt poise was a huge issue, particularly in the beginning of the game. He felt the team was very wild, led to fast breaks. He said there was so much emotion, but this team needs to settle down, play possession by possession. This is something Greg Collins said happens in a game like this, as you can imagine. I tell you, they can talk all the strategy they want. Any way you cut it, when your one-two scorers don't score, how are you going to win? They're two guys they have to have on a board. How about Quentin Thomas with a beautiful feed to Deion Thompson? He's been a real great store. He's a kid who's really struggled from the time he arrived on the campus. He's battled himself. People have moved him out and coming into the school. But he's really done a solid job with giving an opportunity. Splitting time right now with Ty Lawson, who's in his third game back from the ankle injury. Roy Williams can't say enough positives about him. Gerald Henderson for three. Duke lives by that three. They'll live by that three, but they'll also go down by the three. Double team on Hansbro. He forces it up. And the fouls against Ginyard of Carolina. Number three on Marcus Ginyard. Ginyard, a solid defensive player. We're going to see the kick out for the three. There's the kick out. You drive to kick it out, and Henderson knocks it down. Henderson's second three of the game. Ginyard, a very important player for the Tar Heels, not necessarily offensively, but probably their best overall defender. Well, G squared. You talk about Ginyard, you talk about Green. Don't get a lot of publicity, but they're very valuable. Singler's three, not there. The tap is good for Nelson, who's wow. on the board. Nelson gets finally in the book. Senior night. The stars got to arise. Cameron Crazies is certainly rising. Krzyzewskiville full of tens for who knows how long. Trying to get in line for seats to this game despite huge wins in the area today. Not a pleasant day to be outside. That was unbelievable on a temp right there. If that would have went in. I mean, Duke's got a little bounce to their step right here. Lance Thomas. Oh, did they have opportunities on that trip? I'll tell you one thing, they've done a good job on a glass. They've played Carolina even on the boards. Nice find. Ginyard wide open from the wing. Rebound Henderson. They'll let Ginyard shoot that shot. Duke will allow him to shoot it. Nelson. Thomas. Block from behind. Deion Thompson with a block. And for Carolina, that is six now in the game. The right people not touching the ball and shooting the ball for Duke. You got to get it into your key options. They get seven blocks tonight now for Carolina. Here comes Shire. Here comes Zubek. Changes for Carolina as well as Lawson is into the game. Two solid goal Hall of Famers go to Springfield Mass. And you can see both. Yep. Roy Williams, Mike Krzyzewski. Krzyzewski with three national championships. Roy Williams won with Carolina, of course, three years ago. Both mentored by two superstars, Dean Smith and certainly Robert Montgomery Knight. Loss into Hansbro. 12-footer, yes. He's done a better job learning how to make that face-up jump shot. 
Double double for Hansbro. 10 points, 11 rebounds. He's going to Ben now playing for Mississippi State. Team that'll be in the NCAA big dance. Paulus all the way to the rim. And it's. I'll tell you, you can say what you want. Craig Paulus took a lot of heat last year, a lot of criticism. How could you criticize a kid that plays as hard and competes as hard as he does? That's just pure envy, man. This kid is a winner. This kid can play for me any day of the week. His comes first two-pointer of the night, 14 points in the game. He just comes to play. Yep. Hey, I'll tell you this this year, Mr. Schumann. I want you to listen to this. I think Tom O'Connor and the committee have one of their toughest jobs. No, the toughest job of any committee. We have more teams on the bubble. Yep. There's so many bubbles out there. Bubble this, bubble that. <laughs> Everybody's on the bubble. I'll tell you one thing. All those bubble teams are hoping and praying that the Drakes don't lose, the Davidsons don't lose in their tournament. Today, teams like USC, West Virginia, Syracuse all got critical wins for their chances. Well, USC is in. They're a lock city. O.J. Mayo was brilliant the last couple games. Play on. Ginyard on the penetration over Zubek. Hansbrough blocked by Shire. Shire did a great job holding court. He didn't allow himself to go up in the air. They're getting out on Paulus now. Hansbrough stuck on him. This is not what Carolina wants. This new team's not going away, man. This crowd will not allow them to go away. Now the switch. Zubek and Hansbrough battling in the paint. Paulus, the floater. They're battling on glass. Zubek. I thought Zubek's giving him some positive minutes. Just his size alone. Seven feet. Takes a lot of space inside. What a different story on the glass here in the second half for Duke. How could you not love college basketball watching this emotion and intensity? Hansbro's prayer is oh, answered. answered. That's a prayer for most guys, but that's a normal <laughs> shot for him. The only guy I saw make those kind of shots years and years ago before you were ever born, Nick the quick workman at Seton Hall, led the nation in scoring. Hansbrose has been well documented as relentless and hardworking as any player. Look at Zubin. Look at that. Look at Zubin. Right. They found the player. Oh, they found the player. Who said they don't have big people? They found the player, Danny Yes. I love this. Are you kidding? You're like a little kid sitting here. Three at the other end for Ellington. Carolina by seven. And that's what they need out of way. They need that jumper. Three and double figures already. Hansbro, Green, and Ellington for the Tar Heels. I see that name, Ellington. I think it'll do the father of Jazz. <laughs> Let's go Devils. The chant here at Cameron. Nelson driving on Green. That's what they need out of DeMarcus. That's leadership. Performance is leadership. Leadership's not all about being verbal and verbose. It's about demonstrating your ability performing. Singler cannot come up with it. It's going to be Duke ball, says Ted Valentine. I tell you, the Mannings love this. The Mannings love this hustle. The Mannings are in the house. See a live paint in. The Cameron Crazies are in the house. And Schumann's in the house. Media people, Dick Weiss, Kelly Whiteside, everybody's here. It's still Duke, North Carolina. That's, that's as big as it gets in college basketball. Duke and North Carolina are different. It's classic, you know, you have classic battles. He's the biggest rivalry in college basketball. To go over there and win the ACC and on their senior night, um, you know, it's something that we're definitely looking forward to and we're all excited about. Yeah, there's a lot at stake here. What most feel is the greatest rivalry in college basketball. This has been the best decade ever for Duke in this rivalry against Carolina. And this is just the fourth time, Dick, in the 55-year history of the ACC where the two teams come into the game knowing that the winner outright wins the regular season title. I tell you, somebody got into the mind of Nelson. Unbelievable drive to the goal. Like Patrick and I have sat here for about 40 of these, <laughs> like Mr. Yep. ACC. Nelson with six all in the second half. How about this? Duke out rebounding Carolina 13 to 5 in the second half. Nelson again has it taken away by Lawson. Here's where Lawson excels. Look at that pass right out of money. Danny Green. Terrific pass. Lawson got it. He is such a talented player. 
Basketball on a collegiate level starts at point guard play. If you don't have great point guard play, you're not winning on a collegiate level. And not easy for Roy Williams to be kind of reinserting Lawson back into the rotation. Now up to about 20 minutes a game, but they'll take what they can get. Nelson wide open. He's had such a solid senior campaign, an all ACC performer. Carolina by five off the screen. Here comes Ellington. Soft touch. He's really asserting himself. He's shooting more rhythm than he did in game one. He had 36 in that big win over Clemson. Two heartbreaking losses for Clemson against North Carolina. Mike Krzyzewski will call a timeout with his team down seven. Just about seven minutes into the second half here at Cameron. This ESPN telecast is available in high definition on ESPN HD presented by Olivia. Welcome back to Cameron Indoor Stadium 9314 and Dickie V here tonight a seven point lead for Carolina over Duke Saturday primetime presented by direct TV other than sweating off about 10 well, pounds tonight. You having fun. I'm having lots of fun. Hey Matthew's in the house tonight. Huh? Matthew McConaughey. Yes. Sir. Yeah. And they all say he's the sexiest guy in Hollywood. What's he got on me. I did an appearance with him one time and I'm telling look at Matthew. Is he better looking at me. Take a look at me ladies. Come on. You know you got to eat your heart out when you look at my beautiful body are you kidding me oh, come on i think you've got come heat on. stroke up here man. <laughs> <laughs> i did an appearance for walmart with him and it was unbelievable how the ladies were screaming for joy when he arrived henderson and a good recovery by danny green who's having a whale of a night green running the floor at the other end the trailer is hansbro the 17 footer not there rebound nelson Bro with 12 points and 13 rebounds tonight. They need Singler. They got it. Singler and Nelson have come back, and the Dukies are back in this big game. Hey, remember this. If Duke wins, they sweep. In the last 10 years, that would be six sweeps if Duke were to win. Ellington for three. Thompson with a save. And Hansbro looks for help. Duke playing much better here in the second half than they did in the first. They have cut into the lead. Lawson got it. I tell you, Lawson's been brilliant off the bench. Lawson and Green have really sparkling off the bench. Shire a pull up three. They need Shire's jumper as well. He's been quiet. He had 17 in the first matchup. Shire, Singler, Nelson, Paulus all can shoot threes. Listen to this place. Unless you've ever been here, my friends, you can't appreciate it. If you're a big basketball fan, try to get here one time. Carolina trying to spoil senior night here, but Duke making a run. A couple of years ago, it was senior night for J.J. Redick and Sheldon Williams, but a freshman named Tyler Hansbro would have none of that. Knights going to be spoiled by their arch rivals at Chapel Hill. I tell you one thing, Randy Peel's taking Winthrop to the tournament. Jenkins hit six big threes, four years in a row for Winthrop. Nelson was looking for the jam, lost it on the way up thanks to the Carolina D. A turnover at the other end. The defensive effort by Shire anticipated that pass. The lead for Carolina was 11 at halftime. It's down to three now. And an amazing stat, Dick Tyler Hansbro, for all the hard work he's done and the fouls he drew in the first half, Hansbro has not shot a free throw here tonight. That's amazing. That's amazing because he leads the nation in going to the yeah. free throw line. And that was one of Duke's real priorities tonight. Keep it off the line. Nelson, he's tough here. Good help there. I think it was Thompson who got a finger on that. Nelson trying to attack the basket off the bounce. Lawson stops on a dime. Misses the three. Thompson the offensive rebound. It'll be Carolina ball. You just have to appreciate the effort of both clubs. Play so hard. That's the one trademark of Roy Williams and Mike Krzyzewski. You never ever hear that their teams didn't play or weren't focused or weren't ready to play mentally. Nolan Smith out. Greg Paulus back in. Paulus with four threes in the first half. 
energy in this building is just unbelievable it's from amazing. the moment the game began. It's always like this. Give Demarcus Nelson's defense credit for that turnover. Tomorrow, ESPN delivers a college basketball doubleheader beginning at 2 Eastern. Number 17, Indiana, takes on Penn State. And then at 4 Eastern, it's Texas hosting Oklahoma State. Texas looking to share the Big 12 regular season title and get the number one seed in the Big 12 tournament if they could get a win. Kansas won at A&M earlier today. Well, Oklahoma State needs a win just to stay alive to go into the tournament. So many clubs like that. Florida tomorrow against Kentucky. That's right. Loss in the floater. And the rebound in traffic for Henderson. Lawson usually will convert that. Could be getting a little tired now, seeing a lot of minutes. Nelson with a stop and go, turns it over. Green again. He's trying to force action that's not available. Green from 10 feet left it short. What's happened to the mid-range jump shot? Hey, I mentioned Kentucky, Florida more. Let me tell you this. If Kentucky wins, I'm hearing people say, well, they lost early to Gordon the Webb. They lost to San Diego. They win 12 games in the SEC. They're in the tournament. They deserve to be in. Not this time for Paulus. Long rebound to Singler. Loss and hounding him. And what's the call? Teddy Could Valentine's be a timeout call. Timeout. Yep. Yes, sir. Got a T.O. I mean, do you agree a team wins 12 games in the SEC? Are you kidding me? Kind of a down year in the I SEC. I don't care. It's a little down <laughs> year. 12 wins. Billy Gillespie deserves coach of the year for getting the bounce back in the conference. Well, the first meeting between these two teams this year, at that time they were ranked number two and number three. And a meeting in Chapel Hill. Tyler Hansbrough had a big night. 28 points, 18 rebounds, but without... Lawson missing his first full game with the ankle injury. Duke took over. Greg Mullis with six threes, one of six Blue Devils in double figures. Duke wins by 11. Aaron Andrews has more. Dan, when you talk about the energy and how crazy this place is, I mean, this is where I'm supposed to sit, but I got to stand up and enjoy the action. You know, Greg Paulus was telling me a great story yesterday about just what it's like to play in a game like this. He said his very first time playing against UNC during the warmups, his adrenaline kicked in. He was jumping up and down, going nuts. By the time they were done with warm-ups, he had to sit down for a good five minutes because he said he had wasted all of his energy. So that's what I feel like. I'm, I'm exhausted. <laughs> I was going to say, Aaron, Dick goes through the same thing at every Duke Carolina game. We, we have to practically tie him down to his chair when the game begins. Still a three-point lead. Henderson the kick. This would tie it. That's That's Duke's offense, what you saw right there. Drive, draw, kick the ball out. And Quinton Thomas with the answer for the Shire three. Carolina back on top. I'm so happy for the kid, Thomas. He writes poetry. Did you see some of his poems? See that. Yeah. The what extra pass. Move. Singler for three. What a terrific job reversing the ball, making that extra pass, finding the open man. That's basketball execution at its best. How fun is this, Dick? Oh, it's amazing. Ellington. Thompson with a great rebound over Shire. Lost it. Duke's Hansbrough doing, is fouled. Duke's doing a great job, though, keeping the ball away from Hansbrough. Yep. He is not getting any easy opportunities at all. You could talk about the lack of post presence. Mike Krzyzewski's team, so well drilled, so schooled. They're doing a phenomenal job keeping the ball away from Hansbrough. Hansbrough's got 12 points, but he's 6 of 16. Has had to work very hard for his points and still has not shot a free throw in this game. That is major. That was one of the key priorities for Duke in their scouting analysis and breaking down the game. I tell you, with the perspiration up here, if we don't lose 10 pounds, <laughs> but you know what? You can moan and groan about it all you want. I wouldn't want to be any place no, else. This is a treat. Will Graves back in, played briefly in the first half. Hansbrough forces it up and in. You know, we could call that a force, but again, that's not a force. You're right. That is You're his, right. his unique game. ability, yep. protecting the basketball, sealing off the defense. 14 and 13 for Hansbrough. First team All-American. And one of the top two candidates for National Player of the Year. Shire off to Lance Thomas. We're tied again. Lance Thomas without the ball. Slides, glides, gets himself a deuce. Played for Danny Hurley at St. Benedictine. 
St. Benedict's in Newark. The double team immediately on Hansbrough. Got it back. Found Thompson. Hansbrough, and we've got a whistle. You can't hear the whistle here in this building. Got you know, a foul on Duke. Hansborough might get fouled more than anybody in America that is not court. I mean, he gets slapped, punched, pushed away. He takes some hits that are incredible. I mean, what a tight end he'd be in football. Oh. You talk about tenacity. Plays his heart out. He needs one point for the magical 2,000 more in his career. Would have become the sixth Tar Heel to reach that mark. He's a junior. Don't count on him going to the NBA after his third I, year. I agree with you. I don't think it's a done deal. Let's go to Aaron. You're talking about your perspiration. It's got to be a good 90 degrees in here. Guys, just letting you know, players look really, really winded right now. Hands on their hips, hands on their knees, gasping for breath. I mean, you so much adrenaline in this building. And the players are exhausted. You can just see it. Aaron, the foul was called on Greg Paulus, his first. The players will get immediate time out of the first whistle under eight minutes. And now Roy Williams has summoned his players over. Williams was getting some kind of an explanation from Ted Valentine. I think what Roy Williams was upset about is that the foul was called a shooting foul as Dion Thompson steps, or what Mike Krzyzewski rather was upset about, is that it was called a shooting foul. Dion Thompson steps to the line. You know, I mentioned Hansborough is my All American. As you watch here, there's the pass off. Now it comes to the offensive rebound. He had the foul before. And Roy Williams wanted to make sure that it was a shooting foul. How do you like this All American team? Michael Beasley. I go with Mr. Hansbro. No Chris Douglas Roberts. DJ Augustine. And Kevin Love. Not bad. How That's also Grant Wall picked that same team in Sports Illustrated. How about the three Kevin Love hit near the end of the game today for UCLA? Kevin Love's been absolutely sensational as a diaper dandy. And O.J. Mayo has had some great moments in Southern Cal. Duke has tied the game on several occasions here in the second half. They'll do it again. Lance Thomas, his second field goal. You know, that's what he did in game one. He gave him five big baskets on the interior and really was a difference maker. Mike Krzyzewski said it was the best game he had played. It'll drop. I think it was Stevenson who will get credit for it. And people, remember what's at stake here. ACC regular season championship. A number one seed could go to sh play in Charlotte after the first two rounds and rally. Never have to leave the state. And even if none of that mattered, it's still Duke Carolina, which is probably number one on all of their minds. They came shot. to these schools to play in games like this. This is what recruits want, baby. When they walk in a house, Mike Krzyzewski, Roy Williams talk about what this is to play on the national stage. Thomas kept that foot down, avoided a travel. Shire did a great job in his one-on-one -on -one move to the basket. A little pounding Ellington. Two Duke players chasing him on the perimeter. Hansborough not in the game right now for Carolina. Ellington working hard. He's a center with a rebound. Duke can take the lead. They were down double digits in that first half. They got a spark out of Nelson here in the second half. And that is the key, his leadership being demonstrated by his performance. Spacing 15, 17 feet apart. Nelson the kick, Singler the look. Singler won't get a better one than that as Thomas comes the other way for the heels. Oh, he out turned it over. Yep. Totally out of control right there in that possession. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is presented by DirecTV. Must have equipment for any sports fan. Back here to Cameron. This game has been tied at 57, 60, 62, 64, and 66. But Duke has not led Dick since it was three to nothing. What a game it has been here tonight in Durham. From the shadows of segregation came basketball's unknown legends who changed the game forever. Black Magic, presented by Russell and State Farm, is on ESPN Sunday, March 16th, and Monday, March 17th at 9 Eastern. You know what's amazing? When Tyler Hansworth scores, he becomes only the third ACC player 
to score 2,000 points as a junior. The other two, Dennis Scott of Georgia Tech, who had a sweet jump shot, and Jason Williams of Duke, who's in the house tonight. Number one, North Carolina. Number five, Duke. Their 225th meeting. Carolina leading 127 to 97. Duke leading this decade 14 to 6. The first time number one Carolina has come here since 1984. Shire! What a terrific play. What a great second effort by Shire. He's my choice as the best six man in college basketball. A That's starter a last year. He's really a starter coming off yeah. the bench, but he's so productive. He's so unselfish. No ego. Doesn't let it affect him that he's coming off the bench. There he is. Goes one on one. Tough drive to the goal. And his dad is loving it. Surrounded. He sits in the same seat. Comes to virtually every single game that John Shire plays in. Hansbro jump hook. Shot selection becomes so big now. As you get to the five-minute mark, you get the winning time. You got to understand the strengths of the people on the floor. The right people have to shoot the ball, Dan. Of the 35 minutes in this game, Duke has led for but a few seconds early in the game in the last 30 seconds or so. But they've got the ball and a two-pointer lead right now. Paula shakes hands, bro, and misses the jumper. Nobody blocks out Henderson, who misses the follow. He had an easy one. Probably too easy. Lost into Hansborough. The double team. Ball still alive. What a block. What a terrific job defensively. I mean, a little bump here and there, but the two people are like a sandwich on him. He gets no open lane, no space. And they're holding their ground. They're not leaving their feet. They're just staying right on him with their hands high up in the air. Managing the clock, taking good shots, important here, spinning the court. Shire, Paulus. Here comes Lawson in transition, three on two, Tar Heels. Ginyard. And the shots are not falling now for North Carolina. Lawson should have penetrated just a little bit more. Under four. They're spinning the court, they say, come on, play us. Take some time off that clock, shorten the game. Now they can hear Mike Krzyzewski's beyond me. ACC regular season championship at stake here. North Carolina has not lost on the road yet this year. Only other team to achieve that, Memphis. Shire has it swatted away by Green. Out of bounds to Carolina with three and a half to go. Shire, Hansbro getting helped up. Chris Duhon likes what he sees once apart in this rivalry back in 2004. Duhon led Duke in overtime. Back in Durham, Dan Schulman, Dick Vitale, Aaron Andrews, our game day crew. North Carolina has led most of the night. They were up 11 at the half, but Duke has stormed back. Great intensity, great work on the glass, and great work on Tyler Hansbro in the second half. Duke leading by two. Well, they've done a great job defensively. North Carolina scored 90 or more 18 times this year. They're under 70 with 3.30 on the clock, and they've done a great job keeping the ball away from Hansbro. Even though I think he should have been the line, he has a shot of free throw. Amazing. I mean, it's amazing. The thing. guy who has shot more in the country than anybody else. Seven for 20, 14 points, 14 rebounds for the All-American. I have a tough time getting the ball in any kind of one-on-one -on -one situation. They double him up so quickly. Singler doing a great job denying him the ball. Ellington penetrates, banks it in, and ties the game. Great move by Ellington. You know, Tyler Hansborough has not lost on this floor as a player. Beat J.J. Redick and him and Sheldon Williams. Yep. Hey, by the way, J.J. Redick will be back here, and really in a time where he'd rather not probably. His brother David is having a tumor removed in his spine. Unbelievable. On Monday, we wish David nothing but the best, we, 20 years of age. We certainly do. Tied at 68 here with three minutes to go. But Cameron, tomorrow ESPN delivers a college basketball doubleheader.
It begins at 2 Eastern, first a Big Ten match of Indiana's at Penn State as the Hoosiers try to, to solidify their seed for the NCAA tournament. Then Texas with their eyes on the number one seed in the Big 12 tournament as they host Oklahoma State. I'll tell you one thing, you talk about that Texas team. He has done a great job, Rick Barnes. Coming down the wire now, we got a tie game, so much at stake. Want to be the number one seed in the ACC tournament? Dick, the fourth time that Carolina has played here as the number one team in the nation. They are 3-0. and They are 7-1 and all time against Duke as the number one, regardless of where the game is played. We are tied at 68. Hard to believe they were tied at 57, 60, 62, 64, 66, and now 68. Well, they got some production out of Singler and some production out of Nelson in the second half. Henderson, no. They do such a great job, though, with that dribble and drive. Well, Lawson didn't start. He's a finisher for the Tar Heels. Shire didn't start. He's a finisher for Duke. Come down the wire. You saw about Lawson on the floor. Her club's really doing a good job in their five-on-five defense. Hands broke down into the post with 10 on the shot clock. Can they get him a touch? Ginyard. Green keeps it alive. Hansbrough's got it. That's why he's an All-American. Make big plays. Great offensive rebound by Tyler Hansbrough. As he becomes the sixth Tar Heel ever to reach the 2,000-point plateau. And only the third junior ever to hit 2,000. Jason Williams and Dennis Scott. Hansbrough really working on the glass. In typical Hansbrough fashion, it wasn't pretty or easy, but... Tenacious. He worked as hard as anybody else. Oh, he's so tenacious. He plays harder than almost anybody I've ever witnessed in my years on television. I've been doing this now going 29 years. I can't remember a college player that plays with any more energy and any more effort than this kid. I don't know how you argue that point. Number six to 2,000 is a Tar Heel. Let's go to Aaron Andrews. And, Dan, you can talk about all the awards, National Player of the Year, the cover of Sports Illustrated. Tyler Hansbro told me none of that matters. The one thing that does matter, the way they lost in the NCAA tournament to Georgetown. Tyler told me he thinks about that game all the time. He remembers every single play. That's what motivated him in the offseason. Psycho T in the weight room, and that's what motivates him day in and day out on the court. Yeah, he wants that national championship in a worse way. Let's so look at his dad in the house. He's an orthopedic surgeon. As a high jumper, and learned that again in Grant Rolls College. Hansbro out of Poplar Bluff, Missouri. Paulus around and out. Singler got a hand on it, but knocks it out of bounds. Paulus made four threes in the first half, has not been able to land one here in the second half. Well, Duke's got to come up with a defensive stop right now. Carolina ball with a two-point lead and a minute 45 to go now in the second half. And patience, poise, playing under control, really important. Understanding strategy, score, and time. So many kids never, ever aware of that. Lawson driving on Paulus. It's going to hold. And he's fouled. Lawson will be going to the line. Carl Hess with the call. Boy, converting free throws right now is big. He goes to the line here. He can take this and make it a two-possession game. Lawson has not been to the line tonight on the season. Remember his time cut short by the injury. He hasn't played much lately. And Tim Valentine was racing in to get that ball as Lawson knocked it down. Henderson comes in for Thomas. Lawson on the season dig 83%. I think one thing that comeback they had against Boston College was something else. Down 18, Rice on fire, 46. But really, you gotta admit, it's amazing when you can go on a road like they have and have not lost yeah, yet. 12 and and this is the last regular season game. Two possession game under a minute and a half to go. Trying to set that high screen. Dyer can't get the shot off over Ginyard. Now spins into the paint. High off the glass. No good. Rebound, Ginyard. Give it A right there to North Carolina defensively, but he walked with the basketball. Duke gets it back. Roy Williams to a knee after that call. Two Hall of Famers, solid goal coaches. 
This game's always usually got so much at stake. Quality players, quality coaches, conference title on the line. This is the biggest possession of the night so far for Duke. This is their biggest possession of the night. Under a minute to go, Henderson. Lost it to Lawson. Look at that speed. Wow. Look at that speed from end to end. And the follow is there for Danny Green. Shire blocked from behind by Green. What a night he has had. Maybe have a rematch of this in the ACC championship next week. As Lawson right now. Defense tries to cut him off. There's the tip in. Up six. 44 on the clock. Need a little miracle maybe right now. A little concern right there by Cameron Crazy. They had a one timeout left for Duke. Well, Carolina was number one back in January. They were at home to Maryland about. Gary Williams Terps played Carolina tough. Bambale Osby with the slam. James Gist finished with 22 points, 13 rebounds. Osby's layup with 21 seconds left helped the Terps stun the heels at the Dean Dome, 82 to 80. Number one, Carolina on the road, seven and one all time against Duke is number one, three and zero oh all time against Duke here as number one. I went by Gary Williams really made up for the losses earlier in the year to American and Ohio U. They win tomorrow. They're in the tournament. Play Virginia. 8-0 run for North Carolina late. After Duke took that two-point lead. And how about this? Carolina's got 12 blocked shots tonight. Shire, no foul call. Try oh, to lead it on hands, bro. can't believe it. Right in front of him. He cannot believe it. I'm going to spread the court. Just take time away. Spread the court. Why not take the jab? They're going to be celebrating that Franklin. They got this W. It looks like it's in the book. Number one's on a 10 to nothing run right now. Nelson misses the three, and it looks like, again, a senior night for a significant Blue Devil is going to be spoiled by the Tar Heels. Well, Tyler Hansbrough, how many players can claim three years in a row coming to Duke and leaving with a W? I think somebody does research on that. You're not going to find that too no. often. Star player. Hansborough was great tonight. Had to work hard. He got some help from Ellington and from Green, Green and from Lawson. Krzyzewski still working Ted Valentine for the non-call on Hansborough. Paulus had it. Lost it. Out of bounds. Duke ball. <laughs> Mike Krzyzewski uh, can give it out sometimes pretty good. Ted Valentine can take it with the best of them. Too. Those are two strong-willed human beings right there. And Ted Valentine's going to give as good as he gets. One timeout remaining for Duke, and they just used it. I tell you, North Carolina was resilient and tough when they had to be at the end of the game. Duke took the lead, but they made big play after big play down the stretch. My mistake, Carolina using the timeout. They've got one left. Tyler Hansbro, a typical effort and intensity for his points and rebounds here tonight, Dick. I'll tell you, just a tenacious player. You got to love his effort, how hard he plays. I tell you, in all my years, I have never, ever seen a player give this much as this kid does. He wears that jersey with such pride. Plays with such passion, such feeling. If you had said to Roy Williams, you could win at Duke with Hansborough not getting to the free throw line, I'm not sure he would have believed you. Coming up next here on ESPN, it is Sports Center with John Abuchagras and Neil Everett. They'll recap a busy day in college basketball. Three more bids have been punched. I'll tell you one thing. I think he would simply say, you can't convince me looking at that tape that he doesn't go to the free throw line. It's certainly not because he's taking fadeaway jumpers here tonight. Duke has missed its last 11 shots. Carolina's on a 10-0 run. And Hansborough reaches in. Silly they, well, they got fouls to give. They're yeah, just going to run right, some right. time off here. That's right. They're not on a bonus no, yet. There's the fourth team foul, so they're going to do this two more times yep. and run down the clock even more. Not a silly foul. Joe Holiday right behind Roy Williams. Fine assistant. Steve Robinson on its staff as well. A 
another block. The 13th by Carolina off Paulus out of bounds. Great defensive effort today by North Carolina. And that's why they're going to celebrate as the regular season champs in the ACC. My friends, when you could do it for the entire two, three month period, that's a sign of being an outstanding basketball team. Regardless of what happens in the ACC tournament, does this lock up a number one seed for North Carolina? You know, I really believe it does. I think that they're going to be a lock for a number one seed unless something dramatic happened and they lost in the first round. I think there's no way they can lose that number one seed. And what about Duke? Where do you see them? Is it two? I see them at two. I see UCLA as a one. I see Memphis as a one. Kansas, Tennessee battling for the other one slot. Number one, North Carolina withstands a furious rally by Duke in the second half, closes the game on a 10-0 run, and number one will stay there. A 76-68 win. The North Carolina Tar Heels win the ACC regular season championship, finishing a game ahead of Duke. Despondent Duke fans. And a tough night for Demarcus Nelson. His senior night ends in a loss. Yeah, he really had a tough first half. I think really couldn't get going. A lot of emotion here today. Mom and dad in the house. Came back second half. Played aggressively. But it wasn't enough. Meanwhile, Tyler Hansbro wins in this building for the third year in a row. He finishes with 16 points, 15 rebounds. Danny Green, a sensational night. 18 points, 8 rebounds, and 7 blocks. Number one Carolina over Duke 76 to 68. Danny Green, the sixth man for the Tar Heels, just might have been the best performer in this game tonight at both ends of the floor. What a night for Carolina here at Durham as they silence the Cameron Crazies. You'll hear from Roy Williams, the head coach of Carolina on Sports Center. The final here from Cameron Indoor Stadium, North Carolina 76, Duke. 68. Sports Center is next here on ESPN for Dick Vitale, Aaron Andrews, and our entire ESPN crew. I'm Dan Schulman. Thanks for watching. Good night. Sports Center is next.